Hi, my name is Bahadur Ahmedov. In this video lecture, we are going to test the following series for the convergence. We are going to use so-called Dirichlet test, so which basically tells us, hey, if your series is given in the form of a n times b n, it should fulfill the following two conditions. Then in that case, it is going to be convergent. So the first condition tells us that we just need to test the limit of the a n when n goes to z infinity, and this should be equal to the zero. In the second case, it should tell us that the sum of the finite number of the elements for the b n should be bounded. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sum of the k terms for the second series, b n, so when n goes from 1 to the k, and this sum should be bounded. So basically, whenever you sum this in the absolute value, it's going to be less than some finite number m independently from k. So no matter what is the k, it should be always less than m, some bounded. So we are going to use this test in order to test the convergency of our series. So in our case, what we're going to do is, I'm going to take out the pi from the brackets. Um, so it's going to be pi times the sum of n starts from 1 to infinity. So sine of n plus 1 over 2 times 1 over 1 plus square root, square root of n. So in this case, this part is going to be a n, and this part is going to be b n. And as a Dirichlet test tells us that, we just need to check the limit of the a n, first of all. So first of all, I'm just going to find the limit of a n when n goes to the infinity. It is going to be equal to the limit of 1 divided to the 1 plus square root of n. When n goes to the infinity, it is simply equal to the zero. So it means that the first condition of the Dirichlet is fulfilled, so we just need to uh, check whether the bn is bounded. So we are going to do this in the following way. So second of all, bn is given as the sine of n plus 1 over 2. What we have to do is we need to show that the sum of bn in the module when n starts from 1 to the k is less than some finite number f. So uh, let us write down the sum. So the sum of sine of n plus 1 over 2. So here we are going to use a trigonometric formula. So we are going to use the following formula. So 2 sine of a times sine, sine of b is equal to cosine of a minus b minus cosine of a plus b. So we are going to use this formula here. And in order to use this formula, you, you see, so you need to have two signs, right? So we have only one. So I'm going to multiply this artificially uh, in order to use this formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this sum to the sine of 1 over 2, for example. 2 times sine of 1 over 2. So in this case, I'm going to have 2 times uh, sine of a times sine of b. So since I'm multiplying this, I, I need to divide this to the same value as well. So it's going to be divided to the sine of 1 over 2. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the series in this way. So it's going to be 1 over 2 sine of 1 over 2 sum of sine of n plus 1 over 2 times sine of 1 over 2 when n starts from 1 to the k, right? So now we can use this formula, right? So do you see? So I'm getting the 2 times sine of a times sine of b. So just using this formula, we can write this in this way. So 1 divided to the 2 sine of 1 over 2 times the sum of n starts from 1 to the k of cosine of this argument minus this argument is going to give you simply n, right? Minus cosine of this argument plus this argument is going to give you n plus 1. 
So let me write down a couple of first terms by just substituting n to be equal to the 1, 2, 3, until k. And let's see, maybe some terms are going to be cancelled. So it is going to be 1 over 2 sine of 1 over 2 times. So if you substitute n to be equal to the 1, what you're going to have here is cosine of 1 minus cosine of 2. So if you substitute the 2, it is going to be plus cosine of 2 minus cosine of 3. So this is when n is equal to the 1, this is when n is equal to the 2. So if n is equal to the 3, it is going to be cosine of 3 minus cosine of 4. So and so on, we can continue this until kn is equal to the k. Right? In this case, it's going to be cosine of k minus cosine of k plus 1. So this is when we just expanded the sum by just substituting n to be equal to the 1, 2, 3, until, uh, until k. So sorry, it should be here, 3. So now, you can see here that this term is going to be cancelled with this one. So this term is going to be cancelled with this one, and so on. So we are going to cancel all of these terms until here. And what we are going to have is the first term and the last term. So I'm just going to write this down. So this is going to be equal to the sum uh, 1 over 2 sine of 1 over 2 times cosine of 1 minus cosine of k plus 1. Right, so let me write this here. So there's going to be a cosine of 1 minus cosine of k plus 1 divided to the 2 sine of 1 over 2. So this is, please note that this is the sum of the uh, sine of n plus 1 over 2 when n starts from 1 to the k. So if you remember, this is the sum of bn, right? So what we needed to show is that the sum of the bn in the module is less than some finite number, right? So what we have to do is we need to just take the module of the sum, so here and here. And we know, we can see here, so, uh, so the cosine of 1 uh, at maximum might be 1, right? So it's less than 1 actually. And the cosine of k plus 1 at maximum also can be 1. Right? or minus 1. So at maximum, this number can be, so this can be 1 and this can be minus 1, for example, 2 over 2 sine of 1 over 2, right? Where this is equal to the 1 divided to the sine of 1 over 2, which is the finite number, right? So what does it mean? It means that no matter what value for the k you're choosing, 1 million, 1 trillion, or 1,000, for example, it is always going to be smaller than this finite number, m. So this is the bound, m. So it shows that the second condition for the dirac less test is also fulfilled, so that is why our original series is convergent.